This is what we call the kidney bean, or what would be better known as the Roval. All right, well, Tommy, it means these drivers are gonna be busy. These are the tracks that you and I always vouch for on a night of destruction. Yep. And you'll see why, <laughs> because, well, there's a lot to avoid out there. It's not just the cars, but those tractor tires seem to come out and bite you. How about the starting lineup? Big Daddy Joe Labrosiano from Montclair will start on pole in his number 95 to his outside from Hawthorne. The master of mayhem, the number seven of Robert Rice. Row number two out of Gardena, the 62 machine of Brad Stillman. And starting outside of him out of Paris, the 16 is Robbie Salcedo. Steven Belling in the number 25 from Rialto will start fifth and to his outside, the number three, Cheryl Highland, the queen of destruction from Glendora. Row number four, the 10 machine, Mark Shackelford coming out to Irwindale Speedway to play and the 50 of Robert John Rice on his outside. Then we've got John W. Beard, Renee Graham in the number 76 and, and John C. Beard in the 75. Uh, 19 machine, Chris Voigt. 53, Chris Haber. 69, Connor Matthias. The 64 is Dewitt Jones. And that is your enduro field. But if you see behind them, there's also a sport class, and we will get all into those details. But folks, you ready to go night of destruction racing? Well, we're green. Well, the sport cars, man, they're going to really have to work for it in this one because yeah. they had a slow poke in front of their field. And, and this is a hard track to pass on, Tommy. Hold on to your hats as they go through the kidney bean. Lap number one leader looks like it'll be the number 95 of Big Daddy Joe. Now, the way that this division works is you have your enduro cars and you have your sport cars. Your enduro cars are slower. The sport cars start behind them, and right now they're working their way through the field. In the sport class, the six of Mike McIntyre, the 37 of James Bolinas, the 27 of Joseph Breider, the five of Kurt Kubik, the 98 of Troy Anderson, the 39 of Mike DeGregorio. Oh, we got a problem there. The 69 sparking like it on fire or right front is broken. That, that might be a fire, Tommy, and watch out, because that's a bad spot to be. These cars are gonna pull out wide. You're gonna see, here comes the field. Oh, watch out, boy. watch out. Look out. No bumpers, no blinkers. We, we got go plenty yellow. of bumpers. But we go yellow. Now they, they oh, the police car almost. <laughs> <laughs> the police car almost got hit. Oh. Uh, roadblock. The 69 is volunteering for the jet car burn. <laughs> so to, to finish off, like we were saying, the 39 of Mike DeGregorio, the four of Ian Rotundo, the 71 of Bory Molina, the nine of Rodney Argo, and the 88 of Rick Conti. So Tommy, two different classes, the enduro cars, which are measurably slower than the sport class. If you're wondering which cars are which, you'll notice if you look going through the field, some of these cars have a black flag marker, or I should call it a black marker, uh, on the back, and we're back to racing. That was a quick yellow. Yeah. Dave Mark is off track in the number 71 machine. All right, Jeffrey, this is a 35 lap race, and you can see the sport cars with the black indicators on their rear window are gonna have to come through the field of all the stock type class cars and battle for second, right in front of your nose on the front straightaway, Ricky Bradley in the 62 goes up to second. Oh, it's tight going in through the kidney bean right here. A couple of the sport cars working their way through. In fact, that's all a battle for the lead, the 27. So there's two leaders, there's two winners in these races. You got your cars up front right now, which are your neuros, and then here come your sport cars in front of you on the front straightaway. Led by Joseph Ryder in the 27, chased by a Rodney Argo. Tommy, there's madness everywhere. There is. I'm just trying to see how this is all working. Too Tall Joe in the 27 machine. He is now Way battling wide. with Argo in the nine. Ryder and... Oh, contact for the lead up front. Ricky Bradley, what did you do? Oh, Joe! <laughs> Watch out! Robbie Salcedo avoids! And Big Daddy Joe didn't lift. And now he 
he's mad. Everyone's mad at each other tonight, Tommy. It's literally going to be a night of destruction, but look at the damage to the 95. That yeah. could end it. Remember these cars, he's running that car in three events. You don't want to damage these cars to the point where they can't return, but that car's bent. Yeah, you can see it's all askew. The 95 doing the dance. Jeffrey up front battle. You can see Bradley Stellman in the 62 leading over Rice. That's a battle for the stock class lead. And right behind those two are the two battling for the sport class lead. Argo getting by Too Tall Joe and then 27. And watch out, because here comes the shark tooth on the front straightaway. The 75 of John C. Beard. Oh, right in front of us. Yep. Three doesn't fit evenly. Oh, look at this. 95 pulls it off the track. So that damage too much for the 95. Hopefully he's able to fix it for the other two races tonight. Might as well just cut your losses now. Oh. Right around goes Conti in the 88. Watch out here on the front straightaway coming at you. This is why I vouch that this is the track that they run every night of destruction. This is way more exciting than an oval race, and it means a lot to a driver because you got to drive your way through this track. Now let's talk about problem areas, Tommy. And we already know as the racing continues that anywhere on this track there could be a problem over in turn number three. It looked like it was That's Shackleford in the 10. And he, Tommy, he races an orange show. Yep. Or definitely has raced many years at orange show. You don't want to use your bumper on him. No, not at all. He knows how to use it back. But what I was going to say is there's spots on this track that some people might not realize from the grandstands that are really hard trouble areas. I'm looking over on the out, outer portion of the kidney beam when the cars go back towards the third mile. All those walls come up very quickly. Yes, and if you get those tires hot and they slide out to, the, to that wall, Jeffrey, that's 5,000 pounds of concrete waiting for you. Oh, Brider looking at the inside of Argo through turn number three out of turn number four. He's pushing Robert Rice. Now, Robert Rice, you're saying, if you're the nine, you're like, dude, get out of my way. However, However, How the, the seven th has no need to, and we got to change oh. possibly for a position. Watch out, Beard. Watch out, Beard. So Robert Rice in that orange number seven. He's currently second on the stock class uh, standings at the moment. Right in front of him is that 62-year leader for the stock class. Behind him are the two battling for the sport division win. And Jeffrey. And a new track record being set on the half mile by somebody. That's Troy Anderson. But Jeffrey Robert does not want that nine or the 27 to get by because keeping him behind him keeps the 62 at his grasp at any time if there's any type of a bobble. Yeah, but if I'm Robert Rice, you also got to consider what if these drivers were able to catch up and mess with Stellman at 62. Well, now it's Argo's time to shine. Argo the nine is your leader in the star or the sport class, and he has one more car in front of him, and that is your leader for the stock class of the 62 of Stellman. 14 laps into this race. Robert Rice losing touch right now, though that time by his actual lap was faster than the 62. But the lack of traffic in front of him is not going to help that seven machine out. However, here comes Argo. Now, again, right now, going through turn number three, those are both of the leaders. The 62 is leader of the stock class. The nine machine is the leader of the sport class. Both those drivers would end up with trophies if things ended right now. And they are not battling for position with each other. They're just around each other. Yeah, hanging out having a non-alcoholic beer. But that 27, Jeffrey Brider, just staying right there with these uh, two cars in front of him. I think Brider has a car to contend with here tonight. And we know he's good in the figure eights, but you know he wants to try and get himself an enduro win. He is chasing down Argo last time by. He picked up three tenths of a second on that driver. So the 27 chasing down the nine. And this lap track in front of Argo is gonna help him. Trouble for the 71. Bory Molina is now just able to get that 71 coming back on track from an early exit. 
that time by. The 27 gained another three tenths of a second on the nine. Here comes Molina. So lap number 18, Jeffrey of 35. I'm guessing the halfway flags would have already flown. So two cars pull off, both of them from the piggy park uh, camp, Tommy, the three machine and the 37, that's Bolinas in the 37 and the three of Cheryl Highland. And you could say that, Jeffrey, this track is a true endurance track yes. because the oval is a lot easier on your equipment than this roval kidney bean style track. Yep. And uh, a lot more slowing down, speeding up. And over time, Jeffrey, if your car is just not right. Update on your leaders. Brighter has lost a lot of time trying to get around the 62 of Stellman. However, he's got no competition close behind. McIntyre in the number six is the third place runner in the sport class. He is coming to the start finish line right now. And Too Tall Joe is in the center of the track right now. So half track distance between the 27 and the six for second and third. And some contact in the kidney bean. Cubic in the five machine making contact with a 76 of Renee Graham. So lap number 23 up on the board. And I'm trying to find the nearest battle on track with these endurance races, how they get all separated and squared away. It would still be the silver number 62 and the seven at the line, Robert Rice. That is the closest battle on track for your top spots. However, those two are separated by at least a few seconds. So not a close battle, but if anything happens, that could trigger a close battle. And a lot of smoke coming from the 71. Bori Molina. Looks like there could be some tire rub on those fenders. Or he's just smoking those tires. A lot of toe issues, it looks like, on the left front. Let's see, it looks like, yeah, big time toe out for that left front for the 71, the red and yellow Bora Molina. Seven laps to go. Uh, 
Oh, four wide at the start finish line. They made it. They made oh, it through. Man. I don't know how, but they did. Five laps to go in the enduro race. And Tommy, around goes the 88. This is a part where tempers are really starting to brew. If you've been struggling to get around somebody, now's the point where you use that bumper. Three wide through the front straight away, and the 25 gets turned toward the wall. And the 25 spins it out. And I think one car ran out of gas. That's Beard. Beard in the 75. Tommy, the fuel mileage strategy did not pay off for that driver. He, he tried to short pit early and then just run it to the checkered, but Jeffrey just not working out for Beard. He's going to have to come back in the pits in shame. But then I'll just be John C. Exactly. John C. Goatee. Jeffrey, this race winding down, and I cannot wait for Tim Huddleston's interview to see how worn out some of these drivers are. Maybe some of them still have the air conditioning still in the cars. It's worth mentioning, Ryder never lost touch with Argo in this no. race. He's held up there with that purple and white, number 27. And the, the six, second spot. Yeah, the 62 and 7 also have been right near each other this, the entirety of this race. Six off the pace across the line. So McIntyre having an issue here. Gumby's having an issue. White flag, one lap to go. Gumby. Rodney Argo in the nine machine. Brad Stellman in the 62. Or would he prefer Ricky Brad? I think Brad Stellman is good for the checkered flag. Okay, that sounds good. Folks, we made it through the Enduro. Out of turn number four, the nine machine of Rodney Argo wins the sport class. And now coming out of turn number four, the 62, Brad Stellman wins in the Enduro stock class. And everyone else survived, so they should be happy. It's an endurance race, and that's part of it. That is your enduro. And this was the tamest race these drivers are going to be part of throughout the entire night. Did you folks have fun with that enduro? Don't I'm forget, it's it's easy to get part of this division. If, yep. you, if you like what you see and you want to be part of it, if you're going, oh, I could beat these guys on that track, bring a car out. Now, while we have a little bit of time right now, as our announcer Tim Huddleston, or track owner Tim Huddleston, whatever hat he's wearing, makes his way out, I want you all to do do me a favor right now. I want you to start looking around the city. Look around at all the fireworks that are starting to go off around Los Angeles. You're going to be seeing this show all night long. And this part of it, this one, is on the house. It's, it's not free. even part of our show. It's just a nice little backdrop for 4th of July. Tim's made it down trackside with two worn out drivers. <laughs> Oh, Tommy Jeffrey, 35 laps road course enduro race is pretty crazy. And how about that show, man? That's unbelievable. Those are free, ladies and gentlemen. All right, dude, Brad Stillman in the house. Enduro stock winner. Come on, Brad. Dude, come on, make some noise for these guys. <laughs> come on, Brad, they're cheering for you, buddy. Thank you. I'd like to say happy birthday to my mom who turned 86 a couple days ago. Thank you to Hawk Performance, Hanson's Welding, Dub Skunk 2, Double Standard Injuries, uh, Summer Sports Bar, and World Motorsports, and all you fans. Come on, East Dyke and you, Irwin now! All right, there you go, buddy. And you got some work to do, right? You're running in the next one? Yeah. Okay, these guys got another race to run. Rodney Argo! Dude, come on, no stranger to victory lane here, buddy. Rodney, great job. Congratulations. This car is super fast in the Enduro uh, Sport Division. 
Yeah, this car is awesome, man. I mean, I can't say enough for it. Uh, you know, we're winning everything where we go, and we're going to keep on doing it. Right? Listen, it never gets old, does it, brother? No, it never does. All <laughs> right, Irwindale, make some noise for my buddy Rodney. Hey, Tommy Jeffrey, I'm hurrying up for you. These fans got a lot of racing to watch, so we're uh, in the catch-up mode. Absolutely. Coming up next on that catch-up mode will be the LKQ Pick Your Part Late Model Race number two of the night, and that'll be a 40-lap feature to conclude the night of racing for the LKQ Pick Your Part Late Models. And uh, you saw that first race. It was pretty exciting there at the start. Race number two with a big invert, eight-car invert, will put the 78 of McNeil on the pole.